As all the votes are counted, we now know something that we didn't on election night. Voter turnout broke a 100-year record. And there are many reasons, from the Trump resistance to huge ongoing interest in this election online and in our culture. That includes groups like Swing Left, which has been pushing registration and says there's more work to be done mobilizing in the Georgia Senate runoffs. Now, one of their most recognizable leaders for youth turnout is our friend, comedian Billy Eichner, the Emmy-nominated star, executive producer and creator of Billy on the Street. Plus, you may know him from shows like Parks and Rec on NBC or the acclaimed 2019 Lion King. His comedy ranges from the awkward and ridiculously absurd to the political. Chris Tucker's back. <laughs> Ever since Trump replaced the Department of Health with Jenny McCarthy's blog, nothing makes sense. Oh, I have, I have a medical condition, all right. It's called caring too much. And it's incurable! Olivia Wilde is beautiful, you're all terrible, ugly morons! John Cusack's had enough chances! He's had enough chances! He's had enough chances! He's had enough chances! Where is John Cusack? Billy, how is Detroit? Are the midterms all glammed up? Everyone needs to vote for Democrats. Voting is like a childish Gambino video, Don. It's very important. <laughs> And we'll mention he's moderating a virtual grassroots fundraiser on December 8th with John Ossoff, Elizabeth Warren, and Raphael Warnock. And we'll get into that. Billy Eichner, from the street to the beat, thanks for coming back. Hey, how are you? I'm sure after that montage of me screaming about Joan Cusack, people want to hear my political commentary. So I'm <laughs> thrilled to be here. Well, <laughs> you, like Childish Gambino, you do more than one thing. Uh, and so That's before true. we get That's into true. what... <laughs> Before we get into how you're trying to uh, tip control the Senate, I'm just curious what you think. You are in the culture. You're very involved. You're very funny, as I've said before on this program. What do you think happened? Why do you think turnout was just so high? Well, the truth is it was the t turnout was very high on both sides, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because Biden got the most votes that any presidential candidate ever got. But I believe Trump got the second most votes that any yes. presidential candidate ever got, if, if I'm not mistaken about that. Um, last time I checked, uh, the numbers were very high for Trump as well. Look, I don't think there's an election that was ever as heated as the one that we just had. Thankfully, uh, my team won, my side won, and won it rather decisively in the end. And that's what's important. Yeah, well put. And I appreciate your, your analytical rigor because a lot of people who associate with your values and felt it was so important to get out turned out, but a lot of other people, exactly as you say, opposed it as well. Um, and yet we're not done. If it were one of these uh, movies that you're in, and you're in some pretty big movies, aren't you? Yes, you are. Kind of, sort of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If it were the, the plot at the end of the movie of, wait, after all this... The Senate's still not under under an answer, a control. That would seem like mm -hmm. a stretch. Yet here we are, and some people tapped out. Some people were tired. You're pressing forward in Georgia. Just tell us about that. Yeah, and this is the most important message I'm here to deliver, which is that we've had the most anxiety-ridden, exhausting year ever for all the reasons we're all aware of. But I know people are tired. It's the holiday season. People want a break, but we need to push through and we need to win both of these Senate seats in Georgia. As I'm sure your viewers know, the elections on January 5th, but this is our one and only chance to cut Mitch McConnell off at the knees, metaphorically speaking. We all know what a terrible person he is. There's still no stimulus package as of today. There are lines at food banks across America longer than any lines we've seen, maybe since the Great Depression. We all know how obstructionist he is. People are having these debates about, oh, how is Biden going to negotiate with McConnell? I don't think you can. I hope mm. I'm wrong. But we all know who McConnell is and has always been with Obama during the Trump years, his entire life pretty much. And this is our one chance to minimize his power and take control. So we need to win both of these seats on January 5th. What am I doing? Um, I'm involved in any number of organizations. The main event I'm doing is on Tuesday. Uh, it's a pay whatever you can grassroots virtual fundraiser that I will be hosting along with Elizabeth Warren. And we will be uh, having a panel discussion with Reverend Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff, the two Democratic candidates in Georgia. Of course, it's going to be fun. It's going to be very informative. If you want to participate, again, it's pay whatever you can. You can RSVP. The website is 
elect john j-o-n dot com slash georgia one the number one uh that's the main thing i'm doing to raise money and raise awareness about these elections and i'll say this uh, if you don't mind a compliment billy you are the opposite of the caricature of the so-called hollywood liberal uh, who's out up in the clouds or just talking mess. Uh, you're very specific and, and very clearly communicating uh, what you're doing mm -hmm. on the ground. So I think people, people, I always say on my program, people make up their own minds, um, but it's great mm -hmm. to hear about that and people can tap in. Uh, as for Joe Biden mm -hmm. and McConnell, you said, you know, that relationship doesn't have to matter if, if your team wins. Uh, Joe Biden, though, also talked about his relationship with your hair. Let's take a look. <laughs> Billy sure I could have been something. <laughs> Your thoughts? Yeah. <laughs> well, that um, in 2018, before the midterms, I started a get out the vote campaign to increase voter engagement before the midterms, especially among young voters. It was called Glam Up the Midterms. I ended up giving a speech to uh, the uh, uh, food uh, workers, the union, uh, the culinary workers union, culinary, I'm sorry, sure. in Vegas which is the biggest union in Vegas for all the obvious reasons. And Biden was the headliner that day. He also gave a speech and we met. That was, uh, I'd met him before briefly in but passing, but that was the Billy, time. Billy, you're I dodging the him. question a little bit, Billy. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm getting to it, Ari, all right? Um, here's what, I was so, I, it was such a compliment. I thought it was so funny. And then I found out that that is a line that Biden often uses when he meets people who he feels has good hair. So, uh, you know, I still, I still was moved by it, but um, I feel a little less special knowing it's a line he's used before. But hey, he's still a politician, even though I like the guy. Well, it's good to know because yes, does it undermine some of the warmth if you find out it's a quote line? And yet, fact check. You know, we deal in facts, Billy. You do have a nice head of hair. Well, that's true. You can't deny it. It's one of the only things Democrats and Republicans can agree on in this country <laughs> is that my my Propecia kicked in a long time ago, and I'm, I'm really seeing some really <laughs> wonderful results. Uh, on the politics, uh, you know, when Biden was announcing earlier uh, Janet Yellen for Treasury Secretary, the first ever woman, he, he went out of his way to reference Hamilton, uh, because it's funny how the culture has elevated that very cabinet position. Um, you had some fun with the idea of a Jimmy Carter meets Hamilton type of thing. Hard to explain, so let's just look. <laughs> I was a peanut farmer, I was a southern charmer, making Palestine my valentine like Greg Meat and Dharma. Ignoring Carter's legacy is totally nuts. Carter, you are a martyr. Carter, now we know about you. <laughs> Does this joke politically require that, that people kind of think that that was a, a subpar, single-term, stagflation presidency? <laughs> yes, that was a uh, part of a great series I was on on Hulu written by my friend Julie Klausner called Difficult People. And we were playing two very stupid characters who are these actors desperate to become famous, but they lack self-awareness. So they do their very their very bad version of Hamilton about Jimmy Carter. But uh, it's great fun if you want to check it out. And again, I think after seeing that clip, people will be very interested in hearing my political views. <laughs> but the, <laughs> that's, <a> but <laughs> that's fair. And I love, I know you're self-deprecating, but part of the, the joke mm -hmm. there is that they weren't informed enough to, to, to understand the difference between rescuing uh, perhaps an underappreciated hero like Hamilton and a president who on a bipartisan basis, a lot of folks have thought was, was not the standout of the 20th century period. That's true. That's true. Although Jimmy Carter, I think we've all come to realize if we didn't earlier, while maybe not the most effective president in that particular role, is a more decent man than uh, many of the politicians that end up acquiring power in Washington, like Mitch McConnell. Um, and one thing I'll say is that I was just watching, not to give you a, a plug, but I was watching the new Obama docuseries that you guys did mm. on MSNBC, which was very well done. I watched it over Thanksgiving weekend. I watched all of it. And it was just so infuriating to relive what happened after Sandy Hook, when even after all those innocent school children were massacred uh, and Obama tried to pass the most common sense gun reform that a lot of people in this country favor, even people who want to keep a, a gun in their house favor common sense gun reform, increased background checks. And even after that tragedy, Mitch McConnell and Senate Republicans refused 
to do anything, refuse to change any of the federal laws. That's who we're hmm. still dealing with. That's who Biden's going to have to deal with. And again, the only way we can minimize McConnell's power and get him out of that position in the Senate is if we win not one, but both of these Senate races in Georgia. Right. And I know the majority of right. us don't live in Georgia, but what I want to say is that even if you don't live there, there are ways to help out. Of course, Stacey Abrams and New Georgia Project and Fair Fight, they're leading the charge on the ground there as they should, and they're amazing as we've already seen, but they can't do it alone. You can donate, you can make phone calls, you can send postcards through Vote Forward, another organization that I work with. There's so much you can do, and I'm telling you, Six months from now, a year from now, we're going to forget Biden won. And we're just going to be pulling our hair out because Mitch McConnell is not going to let right. him get anything done. And this no, is our chance to stop that from happening. And you're speaking about, you know, there's a lot of criticism of government or the way things work in general. You're speaking about an inflection point where what government is will be decided. Uh, I got two other things before I lose you. One is uh, your negative comedic style, which, of course, is a joke. It's, it's not like you're always actually that person. Uh, but let's take a look. Right. Oh, no, that is insane. I will burn this place to the ground if you pick that one. I saw the story of Marie, a blind, deaf girl. Oh, God, no. Right. You're disgusting. Oh, my God, this is so gay. I can't take this. Matthew, I have been here corpse-sitting your fiancé, but this weekend at Bernie's is coming to a close. What's wrong with you? You look like Meryl Streep at the end of Ironweed. Meg Ryan. What? Oh, forget it. Uh, Excuse me. Goodbye. I don't like your attitude. Okay, I don't like yours. I'm on TV. So much of your show is with real people on the street we saw who don't know you. Does this work equally regardless of whether someone's in on it? Well, first of all, I want to thank you for this unexpected career retrospective. Um, <laughs> I also want to say, in, in terms of the calling out the guy for being gay, I am the gayest person on earth, as many people know. So don't tweet me or tweet me if you want, but whatever. Uh, what were you asking me? You were asking me... Um, uh, oh, if it matters if people are in on the joke. Uh, on Billy on the Street, obviously, for me, the best clips happen when it's, when it's someone who clearly is not in on the joke. Once in a while, I can tell someone recognizes me, and I'm, I'm still able to turn it into something, because even if they recognize me, they don't know that I'm coming. None of it is scripted. None of it is cast in advance. So even if someone knows me, I'm interrupting them or something like that. So you still get a spontaneous reaction. But most of the time... I like the interactions best when the people don't know me. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. That's exactly what I was curious about. Uh, we're talking here in the pandemic, uh, your first pandemic interview. You know, there's something that we were able to do last time that we can't do during this interview. What's that? We always appreciate you doing a I little appreciate that. on the you, beat. You need some designing women in your life. Well, let's <laughs> do, do you want to hold it? What was this that? is the thing we do. We, oh, I held your hand last you, time. You forgot. An excruciating you so many, amount of time. You do so many interviews. When can I meet Rachel Maddow? <laughs> I promise if this you is, do yeah. five to seven more appearances on the beat, we will, we will work on it. We can't do um, our awkward handshake, Billy. Is there anything else we can do? I don't know. When can I re meet Rachel Maddow? That's what I want to know. <laughs> do you want me... <laughs> to put in a good word. Will you? Have they even let you meet Rachel Maddow? Because I don't think they have. I don't think they have. <laughs> Define meet. <laughs> I get to report on the Supreme Court in her presence. All right. I think she's doing that very begrudgingly. No. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I'm kidding around. I do love but Rachel. But is there a, COVID, um, is there a COVID alternative for us? I don't know. Maybe there isn't. I don't know. I can't even see your face right now. I'm hearing your voice, but I don't see your face. So I don't what know. What are you looking at? What we... Let us into your I'm process. Looking... What are you seeing? <laughs> I'm seeing, shouldn't you be reporting on like Iran or something right now? <laughs> I am looking at, I'm, I'm looking at my own, I'm looking at my own face in a small box and then my own face in a larger box and trying desperately not to look down and overanalyze all my facial imperfections. Um, is, it sounds, is, is Billy, it sounds, Billy, and I hate to do this. I do. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like you're talking to the man in the mirror. I am. I am, Ari. R.I.P. Michael Jackson. Billy Eichner. Please cut, Billy Eichner. Please cut this out. Please cut this part out. <laughs> Billy Eichner, thanks for coming on the beat. Thank you.
Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.